Small business is about courage, risk-taking, independence, and we small business owners are survivors. Everybody has an idea for a business, but how do you take that idea from mind to market? This is the place to learn. Small Business School with Hattie Bryant. It's a new kind of school. Together we'll learn about business from the inside out, from the people who've done it. We'll meet the men and women who are today's pioneers and quiet heroes. Their lives are the textbooks. Our classroom is the world. Small Business School is made possible by support from the United States Postal Service, delivering the promise to America's 23 million small and growing businesses. There's no wait at the post office in your own office. USPS.com is waiting for you. And by Microsoft. We see you building a new company from an old company. We see a business full of potential. We are inspired to create software that helps you reach it. Hi, I'm Hattie Bryant. What happens when we genuinely celebrate the success of others and we open ourselves to learn from them? What is our path to wisdom, to a fulfilled life? In this week's episode, you meet a person who is open to learning from everyone, and he encourages that same attitude among his employees, his suppliers, and his customers. He mentors people, and he is always open to being mentored by others. Monuments to great thinkers are Washington, D.C. trademarks. We discovered a few miles away in Vienna, Virginia, great thinking in the work of this man and his award-winning information technology company, Indus Corporation. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Shiv Krishnan came to this country in 1979 with virtually nothing. And today, he has 500 employees and 80 million in annual sales. You do not build a business to be a small business. You don't build a business to be this or that. You build a business to be a sustainable business entity that can keep going on and on and on. Mm -hmm. That doesn't happen automatically. Shiv Krishnan, a soulful person from India, became a classic American entrepreneur. Do you want to get going with uh, financial updates? Sure thing. He launched Indus in 1993, quickly focused on web-enabling static information, then grew and grew and grew, over 1,000% in three years. His customers now include SAIC, the General Services Administration, the Departments of Commerce, Justice, Transportation. His first home run? MapQuest. We were a $20,000 a year business, a $75,000 a year business, and then we've grown steadily. The one key advice that I can uh, give other business owners out there is focus, focus, focus. Do not try to be everything to everybody. Mm -hmm. Does your person uh, wear a hat? Shiv and his wife, Mina, have two daughters. The family lives just a few minutes away from the office in a new 10,000-square-foot home they designed themselves for maximum family fun. Now, I count my blessings every day for what I have been able to uh, do. I do think, honestly think, that it, it has been given to me through the things, the good things that my grandfather, my grandparents, and my parents, others before me did. Shiv earned a master's degree in chemical engineering in the U.S., and that led him in 1980 to a job working for the state of Virginia. My job was to figure out what kind of chemicals are they going to be using, what are they manufacturing, how much is it going to go into the air, right. how much into the water, how much is going to be hazardous. And I figured that with my education, I can probably build a model and model this whole thing and wrote a computer program, and using punch cards, yeah. we'll, we'll, we'll you know, type it up, and then it'll punch all those holes in those cards. Right. <laughs> we'll get a stack of cards, yeah. and literally take it to a, a card reader machine, right. and put it in there, it'll go flap, 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 you know, uh, the cards will be read, and the program can be printed at the time. Sure. And then a company uh, named Versar hired me 
and they were in the business of uh, working with the government mm -hmm. on the other side. Right. Uh, as a as a contractor. Right. Supply as a, a as, a, as a consultant. Yeah, a consultant. So uh, when I went there, you know, I kept up with my computer skills. In the meantime, I took some additional computer courses and all of that, and moved on to generating computer graphics, telling you know, showcasing how you know uh, all these chemicals and the uh, hazardous waste and all of that move through the environment uh, using computer graphics. So uh, I got really uh, challenged in uh, understanding you know how to do all of this, and got really fascinated by the term. And th that's the time when probably my uh, internal desire to, hey, you know, I can do this by uh, starting a business on my own. Right. Uh, the opportunities here are for you to take. Sure, sure. Uh, so it was an opportunity where a very small company in Hampton Roads, Virginia, they approached me. I'd known the principals uh, over the years. Okay, let me understand this. They wanted you to sell and offer, sell and service their products out of a Washington office, and it would be your office, and if you made money, great, and if you didn't, you'd fall on your face. Absolutely. I did that from the second bedroom of my uh, apartment. Yeah. Um, in what year was that? This was 1987. In 1987, how old were you in 1987? 1987, I was um, hmm, maybe 14, no. Ah. Uh, <laughs> I was 31 years old. Okay, you're 31. 31 years old. Yeah. Uh, we are um, in the business of selling our intellectual, deploying our intellectual capital. Right. Okay. You don't need a fancy office. You don't need a fancy anything. But you need the tools, a computer, mm -hmm. and uh, maybe a printer or um, other storage. And uh, then you need to have your brain. Yeah, the ideas. The ideas, I mean, this is where it all evolves from. Right. And the ones that, you know, have their feet on the ground and uh, continue to focus on the fundamentals of what do you need to develop and grow a business, right. they will be successful whether they have the money or not. Right. The money is just a, a byproduct of success. Of, of the if you don't have this, money cannot just buy that success. I mean... Right. I had a, a ten thousand dollar contract uh, within a within a month of starting. We delivered uh, a system and uh, a report, uh, which evolved into a half a million dollar contract. And then, uh, in a matter of about three four years, I had about a hundred people, and um, several contracts. Wow! And um, that was that other business. That was the other business. That's not Indus. That's not Indus yet. Yeah, yeah right. That was right. other business, but you know, those were building blocks. Oh, absolutely, of absolutely. That. And um, I parted company with them on very good terms and then said, um, I'm going to start on my own. Uh. That's when I started Indus. Shiv chose the name Indus in honor of his heritage. The Indus Valley civilization flourished around 2500 BC in what today is Pakistan and Western India. As Shiv points out, the name combines his homeland of India with his new land, the U.S. Mike Mullen was an Indus first hire, and today he is VP of Strategic Development. So when I found out that Shiv wanted to build a real business, I asked him what I could do to help. And since then, back in 1992-93 time frame, uh, he just continued to give me the challenges in, in the learning environment for me to continue to, to work with a growing company. The challenge was, how do I completely leave all those trappings behind and then start from scratch all over again? Right. right. So you start thinking about, uh, are you, or am I doing the right thing? Mm -hmm. You know, that, that was a very, very difficult time. And uh, my dear wife, Mina, she said, if you don't do it now, you will never do it. He, I know that he always had a passion of starting his own business, and uh, you know we were young at the time. And the very important quality that I've come to learn about my husband is that he's very, very positive about anything and everything in life. He does not let little things bother him. He does not read between lines. Um, he just takes as it is, and no matter how many times he falls, he has the energy and strength to get up and run again. And I think that is the single most quality, single most attribute that have enabled him to come up this far. 
So even though it was a bit scary initially, um, we just got in there. What are some of the specific secrets that you use to um, help people use their potential, find their potential and use it? Because one of your goals you said is to find the, the good, the good the thing, the strengths of the people. Of the people. It's uh, having um, your workforce being very friendly. Okay. You know, they smile. Okay. You know, you walk around and people are not always tensed up and working on deadlines. So does, they do, are working do, on deadlines. Do you have to smile? Oh, absolutely, all the time. <laughs> this is oh, absolutely, all the time. And, uh, so the does computer. he smile at you guys a yeah. lot? Does he smile? At all you? the time. <laughs> yeah, she loves to smile. I look at the strengths in people. I do not dwell on negatives or failures. If I do fail, I just, you know, get up and uh, continue to go work hard and fight. Try again. Try again. Technology is um, an enabler yes. for us. And the big break came in with a company called Geosystems, which was a company owned by R.R. Donnelly. They had maps of 2,000 cities all around the world in intricate detail. We're talking about street maps. Street maps, yeah. Right, right. The, the, their, our job was, they said, this is the, uh, the whole project with 2,000 maps. We want you to convert these maps into a digital format, put it on a computer, and it is available for us to see on a, uh, a PC. I want to ask, did you know how right then to how to do it? Oh, absolutely, yeah. I'm a, basically a spatial database manager. What does that mean? Spatial data means what you would see on a map has to be contained somewhere. It has to come from something, and that is the data. So you would think of data in a tabular format, but if you want to display something, that would be spatial data, roads, something that exists in our geography around us. It was a fascinating project. The idea behind that was they wanted to use uh, the products of this into a, a very large airline's uh, a travel reservation system. That did not go any further, but R.R. Donnelly Geosystems essentially used some of that information and a lot of additional information, and they deployed a new product that became MapQuest. We'll go here. This that mapping success that established Indus. The team that keeps our Department of Education uh, customers happy, they provide help. Desk. With happy customers in the private sector, Shiv went after government contracts. You need to figure out what are the government agencies, organizations, departments that will buy some of the technology services that you have to offer? Sure. Because ultimately you need a customer that is willing to buy what you have to sell. Tina Burnett is with the U.S. General Services so Administration. Well, $9 billion in fiscal year 03 was provided to the small business community. $8.5 billion was um, awarded through the federal supply schedule, and a half a billion was awarded through the government-wide acquisition contracting program. We're trying to provide our small business um, industry partners an opportunity to provide supplies and services to the federal government. And at the same time, the federal government customers and the taxpayers ultimately get um, good service from our small businesses. And we save money. And we save money. Mike Sade is with the Department of Commerce. Uh, and I think what we've been able to demonstrate is that small businesses can bring quality to the public sector and solve a lot of the problems. There's more help for small business at doc.gov. George Ultry is responsible for the small business program at SAIC. Hi, how are you? A large information technology company. Hey, George, you. how are you? Hey. Good seeing you. Welcome. Good to see you. Welcome. Indus has won many SAIC top performance awards for government projects. Traditionally, uh, you know, companies have looked at small business as a compliance program. I think what SAIC did a decade ago was to really make it part of the mainstream business, as a business development tool, uh, meaning that we really need a, a small businesses uh, capabilities to, to complement our own, to be competitive. So we see this as a competitive advantage. And we're not being, you know, it's not because the law says you gotta work with small business. We do because we see that as a competitive advantage. And that's where we're different. Uh, we, as a company that's committed to small business development, would like to 
in effect, uh, uh, duplicate the success with other small businesses we work with. Is the program that you have in place for the small business owners, is it formal or informal? Well, that, that's an interesting question that the, the, really we have two flavors. One is a formal mental project relationship uh, and then the other is informal. And I, I suppose we have more informal relationships in the company. And that is, you know, really uh, taking a small business and and helping them uh, with the lessons learned. You know, over the years you learn uh, how to do business, how to do proposals better, how to uh, do customer satisfaction. How do you measure Indus's success with you? Well, we look at, uh, you know, uh, Indus as uh, actually, I, I would say, a flagship or uh, yastic in the, in the sense that we like for a lot of our small businesses to emulate what they've done. Shiv's grandfather dedicated his life to helping poor children. The powerful influence of that uh, when I was growing up was, uh, it was probably, I was uh, maybe 10 years old. The white car pulls right in front of the house. It was a very, very modest house that we lived in. And um, the a gentleman in white traditional Indian garb is maybe about uh, six feet tall. And he comes into the house and uh, goes in front of my grandfather and falls at his feet. And that's, you know, prostrating in front of uh, elders in India is a tradition of showing their respect. Right. Uh, this gentleman was, uh, had received a call at six o'clock in the morning from the president and the prime minister of India, uh, uh, appointing him the chief justice of the Supreme Court of India. Mm. And he was one of those young people that was educated by my grandfather, and the very first thing that he did after he received that news was get in the car and come to my grandfather's house and show him his respects. And that was, that was very, very powerful. Um, you know, that, that showed that when you do good things to people, it always comes back to you and you have to give back to the, to the community. That was one strong message. The other message is if you work, study hard and work hard, you can achieve almost anything in your life. And achieving for Shiv means helping others. Good morning. The masses are here. He not only mentors the hundreds on his payroll. It's wonderful that uh, you're able to take this time. He is a mentor to graduate students and the leadership at George Mason University. How can we help at the same time? Here, he discusses curriculum with the dean of the School of Management, Richard Klamoski. We want to reduce the, the knowing, doing gap. So we are very interested in both theory and practice, practice and theory. Can you give me an update on uh, what's going on I hear? On a busy day, Shiv is caught in the hallway by J. Richard Knopf, founder, chairman, and co-CEO of Windsor Group Investment Banking. They need to make over some infrastructure, uh, need to add some business development capability. Shiv serves on his board, invests, and they call on him to mentor new entrepreneurs. Uh, make it into a win-win-win. We all make money and doing great stuff. We are witnessing what could be called the mentor circle. To mentor means to tutor or coach. This is different from teaching. While teaching is most often done in a classroom, mentoring and tutoring are done one-on-one, -on -one, and all coaching includes personal attention. Shiv is such a natural at finding good people and mentoring them that we think he has a little trouble describing how he does it. George said that Shiv is able to identify and cultivate the right people. Mina says Shiv sees the good in people and doesn't dwell on the bad. We think he must see right into the minds and hearts of people. While his grandfather mentored poor children in India and watched some of them go to the top of their chosen field, Shiv grasped the concept that every person has tremendous potential. He believes his number one task as a leader is to find the strengths of a person and mentor that person to achieve his or her potential and then have that person mentor others. As everyone succeeds, the business grows. Are you part of a mentoring circle? If not, why not? 
It is the best way to grow your business. At smallbusinessschool.org, there is self-help study for people who want to start a business and for those who want to grow the business they have. To learn more about this episode, choose the overview. You can read every word you're hearing today when you choose the transcript and go deeper with the case study. There's streaming video and access to interactive study guides throughout the site. No, there's nothing in Section 8. What do we have open on the total contract? Right? Basically, this is a, a water room. We are in the second and final stage of a proposal. If you win this contract, mm -hmm. what's going to be the add, dollar volume? It'll add another 25 to $30 million in business to Indus for five to seven years, potentially seven years. But I could do an exhibit. The contract that we got from Department of Justice Civil Rights, that was a $15 million five-year contract gave you the potential of up to $3 million a year in revenues. Um, that can be the death knell for some of the companies too because uh, it all comes down to cash flow. The banks took a look at our numbers, our business plan, and then uh, felt comfortable about, I can trust Shiv. Mm -hmm. He's got a, a, a good solid plan. And initially that's where it starts. The relationship is between the bank and the, the uh, entrepreneur. So they um, gave me a loan. They asked me to sign up um, my house, my wife, my firstborn, everything. Okay. Mina and I, we still remember the look on our faces when we had to go there and you know, mortgage our house and everything that we own we internally, we knew, we were confident that yes, we will pay it back. But when it really hits you and then you sign it, the enormity of the, the, the burden, you know, if it doesn't work, yes, you can, you know, come to the street. It, it was difficult initial years to run with him and, you know, share the worries of running a business and having to meet the payroll on time. Um, and you know, sign away everything that you own, um, including the house and all the other properties. Um, it was a tough choice, but we did it. We did it together, and uh, I held on tight. <laughs> <laughs> and that includes data mining, data warehousing, and this is a people business that we are in. So Bob is a key guy at Indus. Al has been a mentor and a friend. Jeff Rosolio is our Vice President of Human Resources. The moment that you have the first employee, the challenges start. We are hopefully well positioned on that contract and uh, if and when we win that contract, that'll be the next milestone for Indus. Uh, we are in the business of deploying the intellectual capital of our people to help our customers. So one of the basic tenets of Indus is total employee satisfaction. He wants everybody to do a good job. He doesn't just want to win the contract to get the revenue. I mean, this company, everybody here pretty much cares about their job, cares about doing a good job, cares about making the customer happy, and we don't over-obligate ourselves. And because with us, if you don't satisfy the customer, we don't have customers. If you don't keep the employees happy, you can't satisfy your customers. So really, it's, it's yeah. the, the company is at the bottom of the, of the, um, pyramid. the, the, the pyramid when right. it comes to who you have to make sure you take care of. They should not be worried about uh, where my benefits are going to come from, you know, are my benefits being cut back? Um, am I going to have a, a good working environment where I can continue to prosper? And unless I erase those routine day-to-day -day concerns from their minds, I'm not going to be able to create an environment where they feel that they can use their fullest potential to provide the support that our customers need. He, he was always passionate um, about going on his own, and that's one thing that I always believed that we all, we needed to do what we really believe in. But my desire to continue to learn and achieve and grow and help people and provide solutions to our customers, that is a constant burning desire. If you have dreams, go for it. You know, if you believe in your dreams, you should definitely try it and hang tight, believe in yourself, you will be able to do it. When that 
burning desire comes to an end, that's when I will stop doing what I'm doing. Are you part of a mentoring circle? If not, why not? It's the best way to grow your business. We'll see you next time. Small Business School is made possible by support from the United States Postal Service, delivering the promise to America's 23 million small and growing businesses. There's no wait at the post office in your own office. USPS.com is waiting for you. And by Microsoft. We see you building a new company from an old company. We see a business full of potential. We are inspired to create software that helps you reach it. If you want to learn more about starting, running, and growing a business, come to our website, smallbusinessschool.org. There are streaming video and interactive study guides. The only way we can compete with big business is to be faster, smarter, and better. We are the engine of the American economy. We create the jobs. Small business is about big commitment. It's about sacrifice and struggle. But we do it because we say, if I don't do this, my life won't be complete.